Hello, I'm Sarah Ong, founder of Sleep Chem Baby. In this video, I'm going to be talking about reasons why your baby just won't sleep through, even though, you know, it has come to a certain age and you just won't sleep through the night. So number one is to look at maybe your baby has unresolved birth trauma. Um, believe it or not, things that happen during birth or the, uh, during or during the pregnancy or right after birth, it's got a lot to do with how uh, they are and how it affects their well-being. So it's something that you might want to also look into um, helping your child. So it could be, if it's a physical one, you could get help with a cranial sacral therapy or you could go for osteopathy or you could even attend to chiropractors who also uh, specializes in babies and children. And if it's like a more of a long-term uh, birth trauma, you could uh, look at, you know, um, seeing, say, an uh, infant health, uh, infant mental health practitioner or someone who studied, you know, child psychology. So you can look at uh, that as well. And then the next one is developmental milestones. So this is something that you know would affect sleep because they're very excited about uh, mastering a new skill and usually there's a lot of frustration going around around mastering it okay so we are uh, we're human beings we want to be competent at what we do so if we find that there's um, a very high learning curve of certain things that we just learned uh, we tend to get a little bit frustrated about it so babies are really no different they really want to be good at what they do but you know they just can't seem to kind of click this, this milestone and how you, you're supposed to do it so that uh, it, it will affect their sleep and this happens a lot during the first two years um, unfortunately so once you, you know kind of get the nights okay then suddenly they have a new skill and they want to practice it in their sleep um, you know consciously or not consciously um, the practical solution to this would be to allow your baby to practice and practice and practice, show their frustration, ah, cry, 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 and then allow this frustration to happen and practice and practice without uh, too much of intervention, without helping them too much. Um, you want them to kind of, you know, get that uh, skill to go on um, and as much as possible allow them to do it in their own pace and trusting that this is what they need to do. The third thing is um, frightening events. You know, um, you know, babies at the age of say six up to eight months. This is when they start to go through that separation anxiety. Um, they they get really anxious at the thought of you just getting up from somewhere, and leaving them behind, you know, even though it's just a couple of uh, feet away from you. Um, and also, you know, maybe they have a new caregiver. You know, maybe you've gone back to work. Uh, or, you know, the old caregiver has, you know, uh, stopped caring for your baby, can't, care, can't take care of your baby, and now you have to hire a new one. So that change, and then plus when separation anxiety happens, that just adds out a lot. Um, it could be frightening events such as um, being hospitalized. Um, that's a really frustrating and stressful uh, time uh, in your baby's life, as well as for you as a parent. Um, it could also be, you know, loud sounds, uh, could come from a dog barking. So all these things are very uh, frightening and if it happens and, and they get scared of it and they, they're not allowed to, again, process those, those fears and then that confusion, they will uh, start to develop lots of fear around being left alone, being separated from you. So um, the practical solution for this is to one is to allow them to process those fear, those feelings and through lots of crying. And then another thing is, of, of course, to do attachment play, uh, especially those uh, kind of games that you can play that really touches on that separation anxiety, such as hide and seek, um, peekaboo, and some maybe even games that makes them feel a lot of uh, power. They, they're in a lot of power. So feelings of powerlessness, we work on that by letting them play, uh, for example, pushing you and you kind of pretend that you fall over and to show that, you know, your baby or your toddler is really strong, they push you a little bit and you kind of like fall dramatically on the bed or on the floor. Uh, it would really help them to, to kind of overcome this uh, frightening events in your lives. 
And then number four is, you know, babies just wake up needing comfort and reassurance because, you know, they have so much going on in their lives. And um, I just heard this one TED talk um, uh, about what babies think and, you know, how the prefrontal cortex of our brain, which, you know, as adults, we can kind of zoom in and focus on one thing, but babies they, instead of lack of attention, they're actually paying attention to a lot of things at one time because they're just, you know, everything is so new, um, it's, it's exciting, so they kind of absorb everything that's happening all at once. So there's a lot of um, stress that's going on there as well. It's kind of like when we're in a new city and, you know, we're sipping coffee at this cafe and it's new and we're just really absorbing the, the ambience and the culture because it's new to us. So imagine being a baby, um, you know, having gone through the developmental milestones, the exciting events, and if they have trauma in the past, uh, plus learning new things uh, or in their environment, things that might wake your baby up and they just feel, oh, don't feel so good or, you know, there's too much that happened in the day. So they need that, that comfort and, and just reassurance from you. So a practical solution for this is if you could sleep closer, um, you know, if you are um, bed sharing, that would be great. Or even co-sleeping, meaning your bed is right next to the cot, for example. Um, it would be good to uh, quickly respond appropriately. Um, not to kind of rescue and just to get him back to sleep, but it's just to respond from you. Okay, is it something that you need to express at night? You know, sometimes feelings, they just kind of need to express that in the night that they don't express in the day. Um, and just giving them that reassurance is what's going to uh, help them sleep through. So I hope this gives you a, a better idea uh, and expectation around baby sleep that can help you troubleshoot where it's appropriate for your child. Now, um, I'd like to invite you to join me in my upcoming uh, online group coaching course called Easy Peasy Sleepy Time. So to sign up, please go to uh, www.easypeasysleepytime.com slash join. I'll put this link in the information below this video. So don't wait because we're starting on the 8th of March along with other moms who want support buddies to do this together while getting live coaching from me. Okay, so uh, we're going to do this for four weeks and, uh, you know, hopefully all this life coaching that we'll do on a weekly basis is going to help you with your child's sleep. And I really hope to see you in there and thanks for watching.